Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So the Precons are, well, either here in your hands right now, or maybe you're about to get them, and you are clicking on this video to say, hey, um, Mitch, uh, I know this Precon's pretty awesome and all, but uh, how would you spice it up? So with all that said, let's jump into the Revenant Recon Precon Upgrades. So first up, let's talk about Commander and what it does well and what you might want to do with it. A 1-3 Vampire Detective with Flying and Vigilance that costs 3 mana in Demir. Whenever you surveil, you get a counter on it. At the beginning of your end step, you may return target creature card with power less than Mirko's power from your graver to the battlefield with a finality counter on it, which means that if it would die, exile it instead. So this Commander is essentially a kind of reanimation engine in a way you need to get power onto it you can obviously do it through surveilling or other methods as well that being said when you do reanimate it is free it is at the beginning of your end step it is dependent on that power of Mirko, which also flying vigilance nice swing through hit your opponents for a good amount and also keep back on defense but also that reanimation it is somewhat temporary or potentially temporary because again that finality counter on it that being if that creature is dealt with if it does die you are never getting it back it is exiled forever and, and gone so then you can't just keep getting it back out of your graveyard with this reanimation effect that being said there are ways around this and also there are ways to really play with that too so with this we're going to be talking about some upgrades to talk about well how to work with that power for this commander how to ensure that we have some massive creatures in our graveyard, I mean, maybe just putting them there directly, or maybe discarding them, etc, etc. And of course, ways to work with or around that counter. So first up, let's talk about the budget buys cards that are within my budget, even cards that are less than $1. And there's a lot of fantastic picks that were, well, either missed or neglected and just not put in the pre-con that are incredible for the deck, like Auric Lore Mage, a crazy good card. Tap search light for a card, put in your graveyard, then shuffle. If it's in your card, get a counter on this. Now, again, Mirko says, give your end step, you may return to our creature card with power less than its power from Grave of the Battlefield. So, again, with even Auric Lord Mage, you can get this one out quite early if you decide to get this in your graveyard, or obviously just casting it for four is not a lot at all. That being said, this can stock your graveyard full of the perfect creatures for you. Again, being like, oh, okay, Mirko's power, I got like six. Let's go search my library for something that Mirko can cheat out that's less than that. Or, hey, yeah, go get something bigger later on in the game. It's a repeatable tutor effect, which is incredible. Speed of which, Violent Tumor. This one is not repeatable, but a good ETB. 2-2 two -two Death Touch enters the battlefield to try for a card. Put in your graveyard, then shuffle again. Set yourself up. And uh, with this ETB, we'll talk about some ways to maybe use and abuse that as well, because here's the thing. Finality counters maybe, maybe can be utilized uh, in different ways. Next up, Final Parting. It's a great tutor. Tutor for two things. One goes in your hand, one goes into your graveyard. So again, perfect. Set yourself up in your hand for something you actually need right now. In your graveyard, you're setting yourself up for something that Mirko can cheat out for you. So again, graveyard tutoring, huge. Also, Gravebaker Lamia, just a, yet another one. Another example, uh, this one also lets your spells you cast from your graveyard to be less, one less to cast. So, I, I mean, I guess if you got like flashback cards, great. But more importantly, again, ETB, tutor for a card, put it right into your graveyard. Moving on. Other ways to get cards into your graveyard. Gaia Reach Sanitarium. Tap for a callus, pay two tap, each player draws and discards a card. A very simple card to put into this deck, and it is a two-color deck. You can utilize a lot of utility lands pretty freely. Now, don't get rid of all your basics, obviously, but this one is pretty fantastic. Being like, oh, okay, yeah, pay two. Everyone loots, including myself, so get a potentially better card in your hand. And also, discard a massive creature that you can then cheat out with your commander. Or how about a pull for tomorrow? Just a fantastic draw spell that was somewhat neglected for some reason for this pre-con. Draw X cards, discard a single card at instant speed, and again, typically discarding a card is a downside. With this commander, it is not. It is like, no, set yourself up with the creature that you want in your graveyard with this commander to cheat it out. We also have Frantic Surge, a very simple card. Draw two, discard two, untap three lands. 
basically a free spell in a way because again you're untapping those three lands it could actually even net you mana if you have a land that maybe taps for two like a bounce land regardless yeah hey draw two discard two replace two cards in your hand and those two that you discard are probably those massive creatures that you're not going to be casting anyways you're going to be cheating them out with your commander factor fiction uh, i don't know why this one was included just a fantastic card advantage spell in commander as it is instant for four mana basically top five cards opponent separates them into two piles and you get to pick one of those piles that goes in your hand the other goes in your graveyard it's gonna be really tough for your opponent to make those decisions and they're like oh what do i put together because you care about your hand you care about your graveyard get a big creature in your graveyard also get some good cards into your hand so yeah that kind of other way to get cards in your graveyard again tutoring discarding uh, uh whatever you call factor fictioning <laughs> milling i guess in a way not really milling but like selective milling anyways speaking of milling cut your losses casualty two target player mills half their library rounded down yeah you can copy this if you really want to uh casualty two is not that hard to meet again sacrifice a creature with power two or more and uh yeah hey mill yourself mill half your own library because now you just have a massive swath of creatures for Mirko to cheat into play if you really want to mill an opponent with this you could as well I guess if someone's got like a brew vac in play and you're like oh okay I'm gonna mill that other opponent in combo with this and you know mill them out cool most likely though you're milling yourself speaking of which keening stone pay five tap target player mills x cards x number of cards that player's graveyard again sure if you're playing in some of a self mill deck and they're not ready to win with a lab maniac combo you might be able to trick win with this essentially take them out <laughs> take out all their cards and force them to draw a card maybe most likely though you're going to be using it on yourself again basically double up your graveyard size every single time give yourself more options so again there are plenty of ways outside of surveil which yes surveil is a way and wizards included many 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 fantastic surveil effects that being said um the way that i would build this might not focus entirely on that surveil yes it works into both Mirko getting larger and also getting cards into your graveyard to set up Mirko. but i think that there are more effective ways to actually pump Mirko consistently and also more effective ways again to get the creatures in your graveyard like those tutors that were not utilized like a rick lore mage which is a repeatable fantastic tutor versus just hoping something's off the top of your library with your surveil one i'd rather mill half my library thank you next up play the blood chief so this is where we talk about again pumping Mirko because yes that is a key and crucial thing we need Mirko's power to be gigantic that being said it takes time to develop this and there's only so many surveil effects and so many surveil cards and some of them aren't really all that good and instead of just shoving really bad surveil cards into your deck utilize other effects that again do one of the two things really really well like milling yourself getting certain cards in your graveyard effectively and also pumping up in power like blade of the blood chief whenever a creature dies you get a counter equipped creature this is going to happen oh and also by the way it's a vampire it's two counters instead of that and uh just triple checking so i don't misspeak here but uh yeah it's a vampire detective so there you go you are getting two counters on Mirko every single time any creature dies and does not specify non-token any creature doesn't have to be yours can be an opponent's any creature dying that is two counters i can guarantee you you will get more counters on Mirko utilizing this than hoping you can surveil so much to actually get counters on it quicker now like a doom whisperer sure which comes in the deck i believe is going to be quicker potentially right away but also you have to use a lot of the life and that's one card specifically but the vast majority of the time hey you're going to get more counters on Mirko this way and it's going to be much more effective and again if Mirko gets dealt with oh no if you just utilize all those surveil effects darn it's now back down to the lowest power if you get it back out with this you're like okay cool put it back on and once creatures start dying again i get those counters on it again speed of which black blader forge we got a lot of fantastic equipment to consider Equip creature gets plus one for each land you control again even though you aren't in you know mana ramp and lance because you don't have green right except for like wayfarer's bobble love you wayfarer's bobble you have ways of course to get lands into play and even if you're just hitting your land drop on each turn which you're incentivized to do with all these different you know draw spells discard spells you got ways to do it so basically get lands into play and all of a sudden the longer the game goes on the more power Mirko has and at a certain point you're not gonna have creatures with power great enough to really be greater than when this is just equipped to Mirko all the time so you're gonna basically have hey reanimate whatever creatures you want permanently with just a single card versus again all those other surveil effects that you really have to be like okay I better not keep I better keep Mirko in play it better not get dealt with or I'm in trouble because I've utilized all my surveil effects and if Mirko comes back out it's just gonna be a tiny little creature 
Next up, cranial plating again with all these equipment and also with mana rocks that of course you're going to be utilizing because again, like I mentioned earlier, yeah, it's not like you've got like rampant growths to utilize. You're going to be utilizing those for mana. So utilize cranial plating plus one with zero for each artifact you control. You can also equip it instant speed if you really want to with a uh, black black. It's a fantastic card to be able to say, again, I don't really care about the toughness of my commander. I care about the power. Awesome. Let's pump it a ton. Very simply, very easily, very effectively with this one mana equip cost. And essentially, again, if Mergo gets dealt with, cool. You're back to the exact same place that you were already at just by re-equipping this. So you're not set back that much. Next up. Hero's Blade, a good starting way to just pump Murko right away. Cruel Creature gets plus three, plus two. Whenever a Legend Creature is battlefield under control, you may attach this to it. So again, Murko gets dealt with. It is a low to the ground creature. Again, is a low to the ground commander, just three mana. Taxing on it is gonna be two more, five mana, cool. Get it back out. And all of a sudden, instead of starting off at what, one power, it's now starting off at four power, which is a massive difference and it helps you get things going. Rune Changer's Pike, again, when you're utilizing these mill effects or you know, just, you're, you know factor fiction type effects discard effects ways to just say hey let's get cards in the graveyard you're going to be getting instants and sorceries in your graveyard as well first strike plus x plus zero x and in source cards in your graveyard which is huge and also again with all these pop effects you can also take players out not just with your creatures but also with like commander damage at a certain point because again you've got an evasive and potentially aggressive commander that you can keep swinging with that is going to have a decent amount of power so yeah pump your commander eight tell me something like this and swing through and swing freely next up heirloom blade plus three plus one again for just equip one so again the cheap equip cost plus the decent amount of power that is what we are looking for on top of that some potential card advantage as well Coop creature dies reveal cards to the top your library to reveal a creature card that shares a creature type with it basically you get that card in your hand everything else bottom of your library so yeah if you have any other vampires in the deck and maybe we'll talk about one here in a bit that you might want to include yeah you basically just like oh, okay cool i get to just basically tutor for vampire not tutor but you know reveal until i hit my giant awesome vampires that i really want to get in my hand anyway so if my commander is dealt with that's a downside for my opponents and again this is the upside of increasing power very easily nettle cyst again a very similar card to what we talked about earlier except this is a living weapon plus one is plus plus one for each artifact and or enchantment you control so again a nice pump effect to say hey i've got artifacts hey maybe i've got enchantments as well let's pump my commander quite a bit bone horde the longer the game goes again the more massive a threat your commander is and the bigger those creatures are that you can cheat out living weapon so again it can be a threat in of itself plus x plus x for x number of creature cards in all graveyards not just your own all graveyards so again you're incentivized to get things in your graveyard great but also if opponents are getting things in their graveyards too awesome all of a sudden i've got a massive commander that again it can cheat up pretty much anything and it's also a huge threat moving on i did mention a giant vampire right Butcher of Malakir, a 5-4 Vampire Warrior for 7 mana flying. Whenever another creature you control dies, each opponent sacrifices a creature. This is brutal. This is effective. This is huge. Yeah, a lot of value for just cheating this into play. Again, very, very easily once you're set up properly. Moving on. Value. Deluvian Primordial. 5-5 five, five Flying Avatar. Enters the battlefield for each opponent. You may cast up to one target instant or source card from that player's graveyard, without paying its mana cost. Base spell cast is way you put a grave from the front of this turn. Exile instead. Basically, hey, you get this into play. It's a great E to be. Cheat three things. Cheat the cost of three things and just cast them for free. And of course, depending on what you're playing against, you can get a lot of juicy value. Again, if you're utilizing this against players that maybe have some clone spells, maybe have some blink effects, which are pretty common decks out there, you could even just blink this again and be like, okay, cool, awesome. I get that ETB again. So make sure you're keeping things like that in mind. And speaking of that, and I'm kind of going on this early because I mentioned Blink and ETBs, that is a way to get around that finality counter again. Finality counter is like, hey, if it dies, exile instead. It's not like, oh, if it would go anywhere except the battlefield. Yeah, so it's not one of those. It has to actually die for it to be exiled permanently. With this, again, if you just blink something that has a finality counter on it, it comes back without that blink counter on it. And of course, if you got an ETB, even better. Next up. Thieving Amalgam, not necessarily that big of a threat itself, a 6-7, so it's not too bad, but a threat that can make bigger threats. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, manifest top card of that player's library, no creature control, but don't own it, dies, this control loses two life, and you gain two life. So basically, make your own army with just getting this in play. Again, three tokens, essentially. They're not tokens, they're manifest creatures, but three two twos <laughs> on every single player's turn, right? Or each trip on the table, one for each player's turn. And also, again, if you've got those blink effects, which you're incentivized to do, Flip them over. If your opponent has giant creatures that you just stole, sweet, awesome. Flip it over. 
have fun with that. Next up, Wind Rear Sphinx. Whenever a creature with flying attacks, you may draw a card. Again, your commander is flying. This is flying. Your opponent's probably a creature with a flying too. And when they do, when anyone attacks with any flying creature, drawing cards. So again, being able to cheat out a small power creature like this can be great and can give you an absurd amount of card advantage throughout the game. Tide Spout Tyrant. Whenever you cast a spell, return target permanent back to its owner's hand. This is a huge threat, a game ending card in many ways. And I, I will say that. Um, yeah, it doesn't specify non-land. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Uh, that might be a way to finish your opponents off late in the game when it's like, well, I've done everything. I've bounced everything. But now, they're lands. Game over. Yeah, a very, very huge threat. Phyrexian Triniform, another massive threat. Whenever it dies, you make three, 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 three colors Phyrexian Gold Artifact Creature Token, and you can Encore it back out. So this is one that you can actually just get in value from when it's in your graveyard if you can afford that Encore. But also, yeah, cheat it out. Find a way to get rid of that finality counter, of course, and of course, really take advantage of it dying. Moving on. Octavia Living Thesis. This is a massive creature, an 8-8 that costs 8. It can also cost 8 less if you've got 8 or more in source cards in your graveyard. Again, if you cast them like cut your losses and mill half your library, chances are you'll get there. Regardless, if you do cheat this one out, that's great too. And of course, whenever you cast your copy and source spell, target creature has base power toughness 8-8 eight, eight until in turn. That is base power and toughness, so hey, cast an insert sorcery, all of a sudden your commander has base power and toughness 8-8, eight, eight, which means that everything else on top of that is going to be even more. You know, again, you've got your Black Lader Forge. Cool. Now, all of a sudden, my commander is a easily two-shot KO, maybe even a one-shot KO later in the game, depending on my equipment on it. And, of course, I can cheat out basically anything out of my graveyard with it, too. You can also, of course, utilize, like, Eldrazi, like Path of Raiders of Rulebog, which is a disgusting creature. A 9-9 for 11. It's a lot of mana, but, again, you can cheat this out. Annihilator 3 can't be blocked except by three or more creatures. Annihilator 3 is just disgusting. And uh, yeah, this is a massive threat your opponents probably don't want to block. Moving on. Compulsion. Let's talk about some ways to discard cards again because we've got some one off effects, but we also have some repeatable effects like this. Pay one in a blue, discard a card, draw a card. You can pay one in blue, sacrifice it, draw a card as well. Again, having something like this in play can make it so that you are. Not necessarily dependent on always having those types of cards in hand, but once you get this effect in play, you're not going to get stuck with a giant creature in your hand that you're like, oh, I wish I could get rid of this so I can cheat it onto play. No, with this kind of effect, you're like, yeah, cool. Okay, I'll discard that. I'll cheat it into play. And I just drew another card to replace it that I can actually probably utilize. Speaking of which, Grimmar of the Dead. Pay one tap, discard a card, get a study counter on it. Again, we actually want to discard cards with this deck. Also, tap, remove three study counters from it, sacrifice it, put all creature cards from all graveyards on the battlefield under control. They're black zombies with other colors and types. Yeah, that is a really cool, really powerful effect. Again, especially when you have those type of, you know, massive mill cards for yourself or, you know, creature tutors essentially as well. Get things into your graveyard, get a massive amount of things in your graveyard, your opponent's graveyards as well, and just essentially rise the dark realms and just take over the game with a card like this. So again, it can be a way to set yourself up, but also a win condition too. And also, you don't have to actually discard three cards to get to that three study counters. Again, proliferating is a thing that you can definitely do. It also can work well that can be your commander and its counters too. So keep that in mind. Scourge Familiar, yet another way to discard cards. A very good card. Flying, discard a card, add black. Yeah, what's not to love about a card like that, essentially? A free discard outlet force that provides us mana as well. Moving on, we've got, and if I got things out of order right now, I'm not sure why. Here we go, Goldberry River Daughter. There we go. A 1-3 Ledge Creature Nymph that costs 1 a blue. Tap move a counter of each kind, kind not on Goldberry from another permanent you control onto Goldberry. And you can move one or more counters from Goldberry into another target permanent you control if you do draw a card. Basically, hey, okay, I will move that finality counter off that key creature that I just got into play. Put it on Goldberry. The next time I can utilize this, utilize that other effect to move that finality counter onto like a land. Who cares, essentially? So you can draw cards with this as well. But yeah, being able to get rid of those finality counters on your key creatures ensures that if they are dealt with, if they go, then they go back to your graveyard so you can cheat them back out into play with your commander. Or again, like I mentioned, Ghostly Flicker. You've got cards like this. Blink effects can very simply, very easily remove those finality counters on them. And also, of course, take advantage of those ETBs as well. So make sure you're considering blink effects with a commander like this if you're building the deck in this way. Also, Adric, Mathematical Genius. Two and a blue tab, copy target, activate trigger ability control, two circuits of the copy. You can also sacrifice it to counter one. Regardless, this is a way to double up on your commander's trigger, which means that instead of just cheating out one creature in a play, you can cheat out two, and that, most of the time, is going to be well worth that three mana. So make sure you're considering a card like this. 
But now let's move on to the pricier picks again. Cards that are outside of my budget. Cards that are more than $1, but might be within your budget. Anyways, first up, we got Nesting Grounds. Again, a very simple utility land you can throw into the deck. Don't take out all your basics for utility lands, but still, you can utilize that card like this. Tap for a colors, pay one, tap, move a counter from target permanent control onto another target permanent, activate on the sorcery. Very simple, very effective. Again, instead of just saying, okay, I hope this creature stays in play, because if not, it's gone forever if it dies. No, actually just move that finality counter off of it onto a land. Who cares? Whatever it is. Again, it does say permanent you control, unfortunately. It'd be like, hey, your opponent's creature. Yay! No, it's just your own thing. So just move on to land. Whatever you're doing, essentially. And all of a sudden, you're like, yeah, I don't have to worry about that. If that dies, I can get it back out of my graveyard with my commander. Moving on. Aether Snap. Move all counters from all permanents. Exile tokens. This can just be a funny board wipe against your opponents. Uh, hey, oh yeah, you just, you just happen to play a token deck. That's unfortunate for you, because... I'm utilizing this to remove my finality counters and also plus one counter. So keep in mind, this isn't going to be as effective if your commander is built around like that surveil heavily and getting those counters on it because you're going to move in those counters from your commander. But again, if you're more of an equipment based strategy, like I'm showing you essentially, yeah, it doesn't really matter that much. Regardless, this hits a lot of strategies out there, including planeswalkers too. And also, again, it removes ice finale counters from your creatures. Even if all those creatures you see in play each still have their finale counter on them, cast this is a great way to say, nope, let's remove those right now. Moving on, Displacer Kitten. And actually, let me point this out. Made a mistake here. Not sure why it showed up on my other list. 23 cents for this one, so it's a budget card. Now, one that is definitely not budget friendly, Displacer Kitten. A 2-2 cat beast that says, avoidance, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, eggs up to one target non-land permanent you control. They return that card to the battlefield under its own control. So basically... Yeah, free blinks throughout the entire game for you because you're just going to be casting on creature spells anyways. And when you do, now you get to blink something, which is massive. And again, hey, if it's got a finale counter on it, that drops off and you no longer have to worry about that. Really quick, Thassa, a repeatable blink effect. Beginning of end step, blink a creature. You can also tap down creatures if you really want to. But yeah, blink a creature. This is also indestructible, so it's hard to deal with. Conjurer's Closet, the OG. Hit your end step, exile a creature, and bring it back. Blink it. So again, a free way to say, okay, yeah, I just cheated this creature into play with my commander. Oh, no, there's a finality counter on it. Oh, good, that counter is gone. And also, if that creature had an ETB, guess what? Instead of getting it once, I almost said twice, and then I said once, and I said twice. Instead of getting it once, on <laughs> that first time you get it into play with your commander, you get it a second time. So just picture, like, two Dilithium Primordial ETBs. What's not to love about that? And especially with that Deadeye Navigator, pay one and a blue, blink the creature that is soul bound to this. So again, when you cheat a creature into play, you're like, I soul bound to you. Cool. Pay two mana. Finale counter gone. Also, again, use and abuse ETBs with this. What's not to love? Commander's Plight. Speaking of what's not to love, plus three plus three protects from each color that's not in your commander's color identity. Protection from three colors and also plus three plus three. That is huge and of course well worth that three equip cost. It's a $42 card for a reason. Super good card and uh, yeah, again, yet another way to pump your commander. Next up, Luxor Jada's Gift plus plus one for each counter on it, essentially for the equipped creature. So if you are equipping this to your commander and you are utilizing some of those surveil effects still to get counters on it, maybe some proliferate effects too, they're doubly as effective by getting counters on it so you can pump your commander with something like this that's pretty low to the ground. Next up, Sword of Hearth and Home. Plus two, plus two, protection from green and white. So again, some protection there, which is nice. Some pump, which is nice. But also, whenever equipped creature deals combat to a player, again, your commander does have flying. Blink a creature and also go get a basic land, essentially, and yeah, put it on the battlefield. So you have ramp and you also have a free blink effect with this that again can say, hey, final counter, go away or utilize an ETB. Moving on, sort of once in future, plus two, plus two, protection from blue, protection from black. Whenever it deals counter to player, surveil too. So again, pump, which is nice. Surveil, which again helps pump it too and also get things in your graveyard. You can also cast instant sorceries from your graveyard essentially for free with this. Man value two or less, one at a time. Regardless, extra free value from that as well. Next up, speaking of value, Entomb. A single mana at instant speed. Go get any card, tutor it, and put it into your graveyard. So, yeah, a way to set yourself up. Right away, be like, oh, I don't really like what's in my graveyard. My commander is about to uh, let me choose. Uh, let's go get the perfect creature for this situation and put it in my graveyard. Speaking of which, Unmarked Grave. Two mana, search life for a non-legendary card, putting graveyard, then shuffle. Most of the creatures I mentioned so far have been non-legendary. There's a lot of non-legendary great creatures that you can tutor for to get them into your graveyard to say, hey, let's cheat them into play. Or how about Buried Alive? Yeah, maybe like an MVP card in this kind of a deck. 
for you know a higher price card six dollars 28 cents go get three creature cards put them all in your graveyard so basically set yourself up three times for what your commander is going to be cheating out intuition a card that arguably should be banned since gift on gifts ungiven is banned but that's a different discussion for a different day go get three cards an opponent chooses one of them that goes in your hand the rest go in your graveyard again this is one of those cards that's like all the choices are bad for your opponent it's kind of like a chosen factor fiction in a way and it's instant speed which is crazy but yeah I wait a tutor and say, let's get some creatures into my graveyard and also let's get a good card in my hand. Moving on, Careful Study. This one's just outside of my budget. Also from Odyssey, one of the, starts I, one of the sets I started in. Uh, source for a single blue mana, draw two, discard two. Very simple looting effect. Again, you're going to want to consider low to the ground looting effects with this kind of a commander. At least I would. Next up, Yawgmoth, Rand Physician. Pay one, sacrifice creature, get a counter up to one creature, then draw a card. Again, if you have ways to use and abuse ETBs with those blink effects, you can get those phenomena counters off those creatures. And also, you can sacrifice those creatures to draw cards, get counters on your opponent's creatures, and also get that creature back in your graveyard to get it back out with your commander. And hey, also pay black, black, discard a card, proliferate. So you can discard cards freely with this, essentially, to get them in your graveyard to set yourself up, proliferate to get more counters on your commander and other things as well that you want. It is a very, very good card. Next up, Jin Gataxius Progress Tyrant. Uh, yeah, might not have the most power, but hey, what you care about is what it does. Cast instant sorcery or artifact, copy it. And an opponent, uh, whatever they're casting, one of those things gets countered first time each turn. So, yeah, a crazy powerful creature that doesn't take that much to really cheat out with this commander. And one that says, hey, you know what? Oh, you cast a blank spell. You get two of them now. Lovely. Use and abuse your ETBs. Next up, Shielder Whispering One. Yep, yeah, Praetors. Good to cheat out. Who knew? 6-6, six, six, Swamp Walk. At the beginning of your upkeep, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. At the beginning of each one's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature. So, again, you get your creatures back out of your graveyard. This is basically a better version of your commander's ability because it's like, oh, no, yeah, hey, just whatever creature you want. Doesn't have to be power dependent. So cheat even more creatures into play and also make your opponent sacrifice creatures. Next up, hey, another Jenga Taxis. Only five power again, but does not matter. Praetor Flash, 10 mana. Yeah, cheat that into play instead. We have your end step, draw seven cards. Each month's maximum hand size is reduced by seven. It's pretty much game over as soon as you take one trip around the table with this. You get an extra seven cards, basically reset your hand to whatever you want it to be. Discard creatures potentially that you want to get in your graveyard. And your opponents have no hands. So they are just drawing off the top of their library and hoping they hit something to stop you. And here's a hint. They won't be able to. Next up, it that betrays. Annihilator 2. Gross. 1111. Opponent sacrifice to non-token permanent. You get that card in the battlefield under your control. So basically. Yeah, just steal your opponent's things. A huge, massive, juicy threat that, of course, works really well with, like things like Shield Red. Moving on. Serenic Resonator, a very good card for this kind of a commander. Pay two, tap. Copy target, trigger ability control, two circuits for the copy. So a way to essentially say, let's take that trigger and double it up again. And then finally, the form engine, pay two, tap, copy target, activate trigger ability control. Again, basically the exact same thing. Pay three, copy into sorcery, pay four, copy target permanent. You got a lot of things that you can copy, but again, most importantly, copy that trigger from your commander and utilize it effectively. So now as this episode is coming to a close, well, a reminder that all these cards that I mentioned in today's episode are in that cardless link in the description below. If you're interested in picking any of them up, I recommend doing so sooner than later because sometimes cards that work well with a commander that's coming out might go up in price. Regardless, a lot of good options. And again, there are different directions that you can take this commander. You could, again, lean really heavily into Surveil, which the pre-con does. That's not my recommended direction because, yes, it works well with kind of both aspects of the card. And there are surveil cards that are incredible, like a Doom Whisper. Yeah, definitely don't take that out. But when it comes to, again, utilizing potentially better effects that do one half of it much better, again, like just very simply Black Blade or Forge for power. You don't have to worry about, again, if my commander is dealt with, oh no, all that work I did is gone. No, if you just have that equipment still in play, you can just reattach it, and all of a sudden, there you go. You're back up to the amount of power. Or again, cut your losses away to essentially say, oh, I'll just take half my library, put it into my graveyard, and all of a sudden, yeah, I've got options for my commander to cheat things out into play. Or, of course, many of the other tutor effects I mentioned, too, which were neglected from the actual, you know, list. <laughs> Regardless, let me know what your thoughts are on these picks. Check out that card list link again in the description below. And, of course, as always, thanks again, and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. 
We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. 